Third Degree listeners use the promo code Third Degree to receive 25% off at checkout. To enable screen reader support, press Control Alt Z to learn all about keyboard <laughs> shortcuts. Oh, wait, that's. <laughs> I repasted it below, dude. Oh, wow, we have a Ron Burgundy moment. <laughs> we do have a Ron Burgundy <laughs> moment. Holy crap, I was like, this is the stupidest copy ever. Well, hello there, FC Dallas Curious fan. Welcome to another edition of Third Degree, the podcast. Hi, I'm Peter. Joined by, first, our favorite Luton Town fanatic, Dan Crook. Howdy, Dan. Chokes on you. I'm the only one you know. Oh, that's actually right. Correct. And uh, from the netherworld, somewhere deep, deep in the hills of uh, central Texas is your hero and mine, editor and founder of ThirdDegree.net, the amazing Buzz Carrick. Come in, Buzz. Hi, guys. Calling in from Heiko, Texas, which I thought was called Hicko until today when I learned it's called Heiko. You can do no, we, that's the residence. We could spend yeah. an entire hour just talking about oddly pronounced uh, Texas towns that are pronounced way differently than they appear to be spelled. Such Mahaya as Mahaya. Awesome. Yes, <laughs> <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so where where in the world are you? So what are you doing in the middle of nowhere, Buzz? Well, um, it's a long story, but um, there's an RV park here that has RV trailers that you can rent like for a night. And my wife and I have this dream of buying an RV trailer, so we thought we would come try one mm. and see if we actually like it before we actually buy one, so... Oh, okay. That's why we're here. Is this where we try to grow the Buzz Carrick family? No, no, no. I'm too old for that oh, stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Very Are we good. pushing for an Airstream sponsorship? Because that'd be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. If I could land on an Airstream sponsorship, that would be fantastic. We do have a sponsor, by the way, Peter. You can read that. Yes, thank you, Buzz, for bringing that up. Third Degree of the Podcast <laughs> is brought to you by Soccer 90. Go grab your new 2021 FC Dallas gear on Soccer90.com. The new FCD Tiro pants, T-shirts, and the community kit available now. And don't forget, Third Degree listeners, use the promo code Third Degree to receive 25% off at checkout. Speaking of which, it does appear that everybody is uh, relative. Well, let me let me rephrase this. It does appear that when it was debuted and showed off for the first time last week, everybody was in love with the new powder blue community kit. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty positive reaction. Everyone seemed to like it, although it was a reminder, again, just like anything that anybody ever does. There's always somebody that hates it because I did see one or two people that hated it. But I think. 90% of people uh, think it's terrific. I'm so glad it's not white. Of course, half the league then proceeded to go to powder blue, but whatever. Still really exciting to have some variety going. I think in terms of if you're from Dallas, like like an outsider might say powder blue is not in the spectrum for FC Dallas. But if you're from the Dallas area, you've seen the Rangers do that for so long, and you've seen the Tornado do it. It kind of just it fits with the color schemes around here. So I, I think it's tremendous. And, and our uh, our model was very close to the reality. I was really happy with that, too. Yeah, you guys, uh, you and Dan got super close to it. And I will say, Dan, the socks that you mocked up in the final version, the powder blue socks with the navy and red uh, tops were vastly superior uh, to what they ended up with, which was essentially just navy socks. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I do agree. The socks would have been better if they weren't just... Uh the the plain navy um for quick response to the people that say ah oh, light blue it's too skc it's the color of the flag of collin county oh there's a whole bunch of reasons why powder yeah. blue works for the team i i yeah, yeah i i yeah I, I just don't think people like powder blue because it's a great color it's actually my favorite color is it really that's well sky blue technically but you know well the things details. that make it that make it an FC Dallas jersey are the red and blue highlights, which are on all of their kits. So it's like, you know, I, I get it that other teams have used powder blue, so has Sporting, but you know they did some nice things with it to make it clearly an FC Dallas jersey. So I think it's terrific. So I don't know what people. I mean, it's not hoops. 
Granted, and Kansas City's new hoops yeah, are fantastic. We'll but. talk about that <laughs> here in a second. I'll I'll get on my yeah. my bitch fest here about that in a minute. But let me. I do. I, I want to add this because um, most of us, when they announced it, also in trying to show off to people or remind people why this is a legitimate throwback to the Dallas Tornado. It did strengthen my resolve that they should offer, they should have been wearing white shorts and potentially white socks with this, uh, with um, uh, or light blue socks to match that tornado kit from back in the day. One, because it will help finish out the light, the light aspect of the color contrast that they're trying to solve with lighter kits, right? Instead of doing just white, they're doing lighter colors. So with the dark shorts and the dark dark socks, that seems weird. And I really was hoping Dallas would have some some alternates in terms of shorts and socks this year. Speaking of that, there was something in the press release I thought was very interesting is that when they mentioned the blue socks and blue shorts that it's going to be paired with, they said specifically that that's the pairing for 2021. And then the very next line says something about this jersey will be worn in 2021 and 22. So there was a very specific difference there that is the kind of thing that makes me take notice that maybe that it'll be a different pattern next year depending on what's happening with the brand new home jersey which by the way will already be an approved we already know that this you know this 18 month cycle so it's already done but um it'll be interesting to see how they execute it and i totally agree white shorts would have been better and would have fit the throwback better uh you know to make it look like the old tornado and it would have encapsulated the white theme but I can't complain too much about the blue shorts. The only weird part is that both the home and road jersey now have those same blue shorts. I mean, they're not exactly the same. One of them has a stripe and the other one doesn't. But it's like, it's the same color. Yeah, and then uh, because I'm that guy and uh, I'm going to raise this because ever since it's been announced, I've started to see photos from people getting theirs uh, delivered to them. A- am I wrong in that? the the images of the shirt that were shown off from the club at the announcement look not just slightly but significantly different from the shirts people are getting sent to them in the mail so here's my problem with that if you want to make the replica jersey look a little bit different and not have like the advert crap on the sleeves and have a different size sponsor on the front great but People pay the $130 for the authentic jersey, which is supposed to be the player specification jersey. If you see the promo pictures, you kind of expect that that's what you're buying, not, you know, something that that looks a little bit different. And, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed this in in those same pictures, but that that sponsor isn't in the same place on any two jerseys. There is a massive quality control issue at Adidas. Um, I went to the store over the weekend and I couldn't find one that was centered properly and not like wonky pointing at Pluto or doing something crazy. Wait, you're talking about the MTX logo? Yeah. Yeah, I, it does. I, I always wonder if it's just the, the shirt maybe from a funny angle or the photo or something, but not only does it not consistently look in the same place from shirt to shirt, it looks like it's... 20% smaller than it was in the in the promotional videos and images sent by the club on the day on the day they announced it. Yeah, I mean well, I was okay with it. Th- I was okay with it being smaller. I did check by the way. Dan, you can go ahead in a second. I did check with Soccer 90 and they said if there is a defect, you know, like it is off center or turned or something that they would obviously non-specifically, they would obviously be willing to discuss an exchange or something. So, if there is a defect, you know, they will talk to you about it so at least that is true go ahead dan yeah i was just saying um you know they if you think about the way the way everything's supposed to be centered the center of the adidas logo and the center of the fc dallas logo are, are you know equal distances away from the center of the jersey right you've mm-hmm. got kind of like your your segments so you know you would expect you wouldn't expect to see in um if you want to look at the picture they did with the the stars the other day, uh, the logo is definitely like an inch and a half too far over mm. towards the Adidas logo because it's not even touching the the FC Dallas logo. Well, it may. It, it, I just wonder if that all relates to the lateness in which the uh, sponsorship deal was signed, and there was a rush to get that stuff stuck on there. And am I correct mm. in understanding also that if you want to buy the shirt, with, if for some reason you wanted the Avocare logos on the sleeve, you have to pay extra for that? I'm not sh- sure if they offer it. 
Oh, I thought I had no you. Idea. I, I well, I, I mean, thought I knew on the replica jerseys they don't offer it, but I thought I read or somebody said that if you wanted it on the authentic jersey, it's an additional cost to get it put on there. I think someone may have guessed that because typically you have to pay for the league badge now. Um, ah, okay. Which before just came as part of it, but other seem other teams don't seem to have the issue. To, you know that if they have a slave sponsor, it's on the authentic version because that's. You know, play a spec. Yeah, yeah, I get it. All right, and uh, just because I, Buzz, you said something that I didn't, I did not know, and I want to make sure you're telling me that the team will have two different pairs of shorts, but they will both be navy blue, one with a stripe and one without. Yeah, the home primary kit has the same dark blue shorts as the away team jersey does. The only difference is that the the I think it's the new pri- the new secondary one has stripes on it, and the primary. White stripes down the side, the white Adidas stripes. Whereas the primary one is the blue. I mean, you've seen the Harry jersey. It's the, it, you know, the, has the blue stripes and the blue shorts. Hmm. It doesn't have stripes on the side. Weird. So they're 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 basically the same color. One has stripes and one doesn't. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, interesting. Well, uh, as a related topic, uh, it dawned on me today that I needed to do some updating. So now on sale are Huntsman T-shirts in powder blue. No, for, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. for all those hardcore Huntsman fans, uh, and I uh, tweeted that uh, that those links out earlier today over on my Twitter account. Mm. Now, uh, real Buzz quick, also did uh, the his t shirts in, in powder blue too, so oh. it's just a, a plethora yeah. of powder blue. Well, it just seems like a no brainer, right? Yeah, it seems like yeah, a no brainer. We've actually had those. We've actually had those other colors all the time. I just grabbed a couple of images and put them out. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, it seems like a no-brainer to do that. Now, I, I do feel like we do need to take a moment to bitch to the heavens above that uh, Sporting Kansas City has stolen and essentially uh, adopted the hoops design for themselves and a nifty New Jersey we saw the other day featuring you know a powder blue shirt with uh, three or four navy-colored hoops, which is ostensibly the exact same design that you guys mocked up for Dallas with uh, red and blue several years ago, and is I think we all agree is our dream kit for this club. Yeah, it's a better execution of hoops than anything Dallas has ever done. And all you got to do is swap the powder blue with red and throw a white number on it, and it's the greatest FC Dallas shirt of all time. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm so jealous that so, – I mean, they sporting us had hoops before. You know, I mean, Dallas was the first one to ever have them in the league. But since then, other people – since Dallas didn't – corner of the market and hold on to it other people have since done them so this is not the first time sporting has done them this happens to be a phenomenal one and would be perfect if it was red instead of powder blue wasn't the first time kansas city did it wasn't it an away jersey wasn't it a navy jersey with light blue hoops yes yeah okay i knew it yeah, was that different. sounds right yeah. yeah yeah it was also cool, well done uh, you know oh yeah no and you know somebody was asking me um uh, well, what you know? What, why did they stop doing the red and white? And I was trying to explain to them is because red and white hoops was that it wasn't the hoop design is a fundamental concept that's the failure. It's the red and white. Who wants to wear candy canes, Waldo, Mister Peppermint, uh, in large numbers? That's why it was such a crumb. You know, Every bad US selling national team fan. Well, okay, yeah. yeah, but that was also the worst selling U.S. national team jersey in Nike history. Was the red and white shirt that they did? You and I and everybody was it really? loved. Yeah, it was the lowest selling that's why they got that's, yeah that's the hardest one for people to get hold of these days because every time one comes up for sale they're like three hundred dollars i i don't think they i think that uh, though i have been told it was the lowest selling um you know in the in the, the period of time that they you know record that kind of stuff so modern time i mean i and well, i don't they think only they produced had it for one season because right. of the centenary kit was the same time right and there wasn't a ton of them made it's like that it's yeah. like that don't tread on me shirt that i own uh that i could sell for a gajillion dollars um which was also a great shirt it was what except for the with- Except for the fact that it was made out of asbestos, it's the heaviest, thickest, <laughs> hottest short sleeve shirt I own in the world. Like if I like when it was freezing here, negative twenty. That's what I put on to keep warm. By the way, um, uh, yes. Well, the nice thing about the USA with that jersey is a they put it with dark blue navy shorts, which makes it look way better, you know. And then the second thing was when Dallas did it. If you look around the 
the world at teams that have red and white stripes or hoops or whatever, they usually pair it with a white short instead of the red like Dallas did. Dallas only did yeah. that once, white shorts. It looked way better. Oh, yeah. So, again, with Dallas, it's always execution. They always have a – they often have a decent concept and almost always don't execute it really well. Sporting is always better at, at kits except maybe the tire tread one last year. But they're always better at kits than Dallas was. So it's no shock that their hoop is better than Dallas. <laughs> Well, uh, congratulations uh, to the club for uh, delivering a fantastic new away kit. I think we all generally like it, and if there are issues with it, I'm sure they'll all get sorted out. Now, the next thing that I want to ask Buzz about is because I saw him tweet this, and I was extremely confused. Can you uh, please uh, put some details into why you are getting reports about the new Spanish center back Martinez and how they are scaring you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was a bit of a clickbait, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm a guy who likes to under-promise and over-deliver as a general philosophy. So if I'm starting to get a whole lot of hype on stuff, that makes me nervous. I'd rather go into a situation thinking I'm going to be disappointed and then have my expectations exceeded. So the reason this scares me is that I keep getting feedback that Jose Martinez is fantastic. And I'm not talking about like just from random dopes i'm talking about two separate players reached out to me like through connections to specifically say martinez is legit good and one one called him a captain material the other said they really liked him and then matt hedges was on media day and said the guy's great looks like a player you know i'm paraphrasing matt hedges so the reason it scares me is that it's only one week into training and already this guy's generating hype as being the real deal as center back. And that makes me nervous. I haven't even seen him yet, you know, and I'm, so I'm worried that like this kind of start is going to crash and burn and be horrible. And when I see it in reality, I'm, I, that's why it scares me. So the, the, the really it's a positive news and I have not heard anything about any other new addition. This is literally the only player that someone has come to me about so far, which ought to tell you like how good he must be. You know, so uh, I, I'm trying internally to, to tap the brakes on my excitement because I'm a week in and I'm already really excited about this guy. Buzz, it's OK. He's not Santiago Mascara. Yeah, I get I mean, you know, when a guy comes to Barcelona, right, you should have from their system, you should have some expectations. It's just really exciting to have a guy being doing so well that like things without us even being able to go to training, we're already hearing that this great buzz. Wow. That's funny. Great buzz about the guy when, you know, with, without having seen him at all. So I'm real excited about the shape of the defense, you know, and the way he's going to work with Matt Hedges and I haven't even seen him. So that's why it scares me. Uh, that does raise a question. Have you guys been communicated to by the club or the league about the status of when you'll be able to go back and start watching practice again? Uh, yeah, the team sent out an email at the beginning of the season that was actually worded really positively in the sense of like, now they could just be like, I always say, don't believe the team when they're talking, but they said that they really want to open training back up and they're really looking forward to it and they want to get back to normal, but they're stuck waiting for the league to change their setup, uh, their COVID restrictions. And, and obviously the league's going to go with whatever the most strict rule is locally. That's the rule they're going to go with league-wide. So we're going to be stuck for a while probably not being able to go. Um, you know, there is no expectation of when we'll be able to. Hopefully they'll put some of these preseason scrimmages on TV. That'll be nice. They actually, uh, they actually reiterated exactly what you said uh, on the media call earlier today. Which was what? Uh, just that you know they're they're really uh, eager to to get away from it because you know I'm sure it's easier for them to hang out at practice than it is set up all the Zoom meetings and get people into yeah. little rooms and chase them around with a laptop in your hand running all over. We were the talking place, about this so. earlier in the week, Dan. Was it Monday when there were? They'd had a media call with players, and there were two reporters on. So it's like they can't – I mean, I feel like, and I'm sure they can't feel like, that in the middle of all this stuff, their coverage is dying. It's withering on the vine. So I feel like they're going to want to get us out to training. I don't mean us specifically. I mean all media availability back out to training, you know, because well, it's very difficult to cover this team if all you're doing is Zoom calls. You know, yeah, we I mean, were talking this... about today. Go ahead, Dan. I was going to say this morning that the call ended up being, you know, significantly late because 
you know, we, we know Lucci likes to spend a bit of extra time on the field and that's his job primarily speaking to us is a, you know, is a secondary man. Um, so, you know, if you, if you've watched practice, we, there's been times we've sat around for two hours waiting for players. If you're there, it's a lot easier to justify it than if you're watching a zoom screen and, and they know that. And, you know, I'm sure ultimately they, they don't want to see those numbers dropping off. Uh, you know, I'm sure they wanted whatever the original amount of people who were waiting on the call, not the three of us that actually spoke to Lucci in the end. I just worry that the uh, club and the league are going to use this COVID thing as an excuse to keep the media as far away as possible for as long as possible, because I just think it makes their lives easier and it allows them to control narrative and break news yeah. and, and protect you know, protect things that they need to protect. And that's my biggest worry about all of this. So there's actually yeah, you know, I, one funny thing. FC Dallas may have been a little bit ahead of the curve on. Um, you know, a lot of team. you know, you, it used to be a case where you went in the locker room and you grabbed whoever you wanted from their seat. And some of the European players had a problem with that because that's just not how things are done in Europe. There's The locker room is sacred. So because they've got that enormous locker room, they kind of halved it. So you could see what the players were doing, but they would bring players to you, which was nice because you would get more access to more players. It wasn't if you went to Matt Hedges, you might miss Paxton, or if you went to, to Jesus, you might miss, I don't know, somebody else. Uh, you know, now it's like, which kind of seems like either using that or using the the press conference room is probably going to be the way forward as a way to you know, maybe minimize the, the physical interactions with players, uh, mm-hmm. that, that kind of closeness, but still have them present at least. I think in the end, Peter, that this league in general is so desperate for our coverage, you know, that they're, they're a long way from being from where they feel like we can really close practice like the NFL does. You know what I mean? It's like, cause there's so many outs are like, I'm not going to send anybody if you're not going to let us see anything or talk to anybody, you know what I mean? So like, why even bother? We'll just call you on the phone if we even care to do anything at all. So uh, I think in the long run, they'll open it back up because they just they're, they're so desperate to be relevant, you know, that they're going to feel like they have to have it open. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, it continues to amaze me the amount of time and effort, Buzz, you in particular put into covering the team. The article that you posted this week that kind of ran through all of the kids on the U19s down to the U15s in their games against Solar last week. I was just, you know, if, if you're a nerd about this club, that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, the fact that you are doing that and the club isn't doing it, uh, I, you know, I could rant about that forever. So, um, <laughs> yeah, they they just need to give everybody access to the team. Uh, it would do. Oh them. man, you know how much a pain that was to put together because we can't go watch academy stuff either because we can't go to the complex at all. Like the whole complex is closed, and that means academy games yeah. too. Hmm. You know, and there is no PR for the academy, so it's like I literally had to talk to like all these different people and sources to try and piece together all that stuff. You know, uh, and it's it was a gigantic pain. You can't just ask the PR because they're not going to bother to give you the first team PR or even like the North Texas PR. It's like, that's not their gig. They're not the youth PR. It's not their job. So it's like, yeah, well, it's such a pain, you know, but you know, that was a great piece though. That was really fun. I also want to add on that. Go ahead. You absolutely should promote it and, and continuously promote it because it was, it was, it was really unique to this club, right? It, it really focuses and digs into the one thing this club is really good at and the one thing that, you, that any soccer fan could or should get excited about, which is really the sense that you're looking at the next set of you know, potential professional players and you're watching them kind of come through the system and you're covering that. I, I think that's really good. And, and it, it dawned on me the other day um, when Lucci had his first official – uh, did we talk about the first press press conference, by the way, in the last podcast? No. Uh-uh. Yeah. So it, you know, it, this really hit me like a ton of bricks. So you were listening to the you were listening to the first press conference post uh, practice uh, for the 2021 season, and the first question that was asked by a media <laughs> member was about a kid that had never even played in Major League Soccer. Yeah, and it was and He's never it, a pro, and and the and the most the crazy part was is that it was a writer from MLSsoccer.com that asked the question. So, 
in the, and just to kind of fill in the listener, the, the question was about Weston. And the timeliness of the question made sense because it was the day that Juventus uh, sealed the deal for Weston to uh, complete the deal at Juventus and all of that. And that's a, that's a huge story. But the fact that that story was the first question asked at the very first press conference for the FC Dallas season really indicates to me that there is a danger that this thing that this club is really good at uh, is starting to erode or exacerbate the fact that its actual MLS product isn't all that interesting. And what's really interesting about this team is something completely different. Well, that's compound well, so of what we just talked about, Peter, that you can't go watch training. Compounds that. Yeah. Like the only thing you can't the only thing you can see right now is West and McKinney play for Juve. Like you can't you can't see anything else related to FC Dallas. It's like there's nothing. I know. So it's like what else are people going to ask about? It's weird. What were you going to say, Dan? Wasn't the second question about uh, Boca Genius versus River Plate as well? Was yeah, it, it really? was. They were like it was in Spanish, obviously, but yeah. The, I think the I think there were guy three from Aldea asked like three <laughs> questions about different leagues and what Lucci thought of them. It was weird. Yeah, I, I think that is a I think that is a huge problem, and I'm thinking if I am whoever you want to whoever's running it, if it's Gina or Dan or whoever it is, if that's how that press conference goes, I think you've got to come away from that press conference freaking out. And I'm probably calling Dan Quartermanch up at the league going, why is an MLS writer asking us? That's the first question they ask in a press conference and fussing yeah. about that in terms of media relations. But that's a somebody else's job and I'll let them handle it. But I, I, I really do wonder if, if, in fact, we're at that point where M, if FC Dallas has become this kind of you know juggernaut at this one thing and its actual MLS product has really just kind of fallen off the table in terms of relevancy these days. It's a valid question. You know, if they can't figure out, like Lucci was very, very adamant, like in that very same press conference, he finally got a chance to talk about like the goals of the season. And so he kind of puffed his chest out. that like, we're going to be the first team that sells players to win MLS cup. Like this is going to be this badge of pride or whatever. That's the goal. And so he obviously, I mean, to me, that obviously is Lucci recognizing that the first 15 minutes of the press conference was not about his team. You know, so it's like clearly a new Lucci knew, yeah. you know, that that's what was happening. But to relate it back to that article, I, I thought it was a fun exercise to take, like, what I, I called it a snapshot because it was the same day that the academy played solo, that the, they also had North Texas training and FC Dallas training. And there literally was this cascade of, of up and down shifting happening. Well, not down, up movement up shifting happening all up and down the academy. So I thought that was really fun. And if you're into it a bit, into the academy at all, I, I mean, I'm not to toot the own horn on the article, but you should go read it because I thought it was fascinating. Um, now, there's been some slight changes since then, and we can go into that too in a minute. But um, you are right, Peter, that this is how the academy works. They move guys up and up and up and up and up, you know, and it's what they're known for. And you're right that it has eclipsed the product on the field. When was the last time MLS wrote an article about the play of SC Dallas on the field? It probably was Me. the Portland playoff win, you know. No, oh, it was def- yeah. It was easily la- during the season last season. I don't think they've written yeah. anything about the on-field actual senior club team product since the end of the season. Yeah, well, I mean, where's the article about Ricarte or Hara or whatever, you know, or Hedges? I mean, nothing, right? So, uh, Unfortunately, you, you also got to remember is since COVID and the, the whole Zoom thing, now that they have access to every team's media availability and they're just like, okay, we don't need in-market writers who know the teams, we'll just keep it in-house. And they're just writing generic stuff that, you know, they're just, it's it's quantity over quality at this point. Well, I will say this. I, I don't hold a lot of, uh, I, I mean, I, I wish the people in the press conference had chosen to ask questions specific to the club in the new season, you know, and Lucci's plans and not about things unrelated to those deals. But I also, at the same time, understand for that particular writer, there was something more interesting to ask about. Weston McKenney signed a giant, you know, a, a giant deal got completed for him, which was a significant moment in the, in the history of this league. And now the, the Spanish guy asking questions about different leagues, I don't get, but, or yeah. let me also alternatively say he's so disinterested in the on-field product. He had to ask other questions. Now yeah. I think that's the wrong thing to do, but at some point I have to think 
that Gina and Dan and Clark have to stop and think to themselves, what are we going to do where our own press conferences, we're the number one question that get asked about it? Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting question to ask yourself this. What's Dallas's greatest accomplishment? And it might be Weston McKinney. <laughs> you know, it's like, do you, where do you put like an open cup win or a supporter shield win compared to Weston McKinney with Juventus? You know, I mean, that guy cha- the way, changed the way the whole league does business by missing out on him. So it's like, you know, maybe it really is the context of this team. If you don't from here, if you don't care about Dallas, you know, that's what you care about. Right. Yeah. It is it is fascinating, and it uh, and it'll be interesting to see how that continues, as especially as Weston continues to achieve things with Juventus. You know, score amazing goals, play really well, get accolades from significant European media outlets, those types of things. You know, does that just continue to drive this problem for the club, and what do they do about it, or do they figure out a way to capitalize on it? That's the other. You know, turn it into an opportunity and. That'll be uh, that'll be fun uh, to, well, to look at. Well, there's no such thing as bad publicity, and there were a whole bunch of Weston McKinney articles this week in big national soccer publications. So, you know, hopefully they're getting something out of it. And not a lot of mentions about FC Dallas in any of them, unfortunately. Yeah. I know, right. right. Mm. Uh, by the way, I did the calculation. I believe if, in fact, uh, solidarity and or training payments are due to FC Dallas, based on the numbers, I think – Dan and Clark will receive a check for somewhere between a half million and three quarters of a million dollars for Weston's age 12 through 18 here in Dallas. Well, that's not a terrible return. I mean, it's not what you wanted out of him, obviously. Better than the zero they thought they got. (laughs) Yeah. Right? For sure. For sure. Um, okay, so uh, Buzz, earlier a couple days ago, maybe it was yesterday, you tweeted out a list of the full roster. Anything in particular about the roster that, of people that are in training we need to discuss? Well, yeah, now that uh, we'll get to the Jesus and the U23s later, but Tanner will be back and Pepe will be back soon. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is that, and it relates between the roster and the thing I did about the the whole FC Dallas system, is that since that weekend there's been – because of the protocol isms and stuff, they were able to shift over some guys from North Texas. Uh, and it's worth mentioning that are now training with the FC Dallas first team. Now, part of that is just to have enough bodies and, and do all the drills they want to do. But still, some recognition of these guys is important. One of them is uh, Grady Easton, who's a U19 that originally came from the Dallas Texas, not Dallas Texas, excuse me, Texas SC, which is Quills Club. He came to FC Dallas uh, for the 2019-2020 academy season, and he he started two games for North Texas at center back. So he has was with North Texas in training, and now is with the first team in training. So include him as an academy guy, along with Antonio Carrera and um, uh, Knight Pickering, who we all have reported on before. Um, Coolest with the, name yeah. ever, by the way. Yeah, I did. I did 100 percent make sure it is just night. The E is silent. Although funny enough, his mom when his mom is screaming at him from the sideline, she calls him nighty, which is funny. But <laughs> apparently, it's just night. <laughs> and I was like, wait, it is nighty. And they were like, no, 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 that's just his mom. Um, I mean, he's 16. His mom still comes to his games. Uh, and so then, other than um, Grady Easton, who's an SMU commitment, by the way, um, six players have shifted over from. Uh, North Texas SC, and let me do this from memory. It's Derek Waldeck, who's the left back from Stanford. It's um, Colin Smith, who is actually an academy player from the 19s, who was with North Texas last year uh, as a academy player. By the way, in the video from camp this week, he was playing right back, a thing that I suggested, so that was fun. Um, Benny Redzik, who's the other creative winger, U19, that was with North Texas all last year. Both those guys basically have stopped playing with the 19s. They're just with North Texas all the time. And then um, Imanol Algum, uh, oh, geez, sorry, Imanol Al, gosh, dang it, Dan. Almaguer. Almaguer. I don't know why I was catching there. I couldn't say that. He's an eight usually, but he can play outside back. Javon Rayo. These are guys that have done fairly well coming out of the academy and signing with North Texas. And the last one I think is Hope Kodzo. So those six players have joined the FC Dallas first training. Kodzo actually trained with the first team when he was 16, like back in 2019. So that's that's the level he's at. He's the kid that they've brought back that they spotted in the Dallas Cup. Real excited to see what he does with North Texas. So those guys have been mixed in with the first team now. So kudos to them. It's an opportunity for them. Can they make some buzz? Uh, of all the draft picks, only the kid from um, 
Campbell uh, is here, and then um, uh, the goalkeeper is here. It looks like the North Carolina guys chose to stay in school. Yeah, they did. Uh, Colin Shuttler's the keeper. And, uh, oh, Nicky Hernandez, of course, who's a technically a North Texas soccer club player. I wasn't counting him as the six because he was drafted by Dallas. So he's been with them the whole time. So those are all the guys that are in camp that aren't signed technically. So that we know and, of because uh, we can't go. And Lucci wanted to highlight those on the uh, media call today. Our good friend John was asking about the uh, the highlights of Thomas Roberts and uh, Dante Seeley. Uh, scoring a couple of bangers that they put out on social media, and you know, he was keen to say, you know, that we've got other players from our academy, from the from the second team, some that aren't signed, and you know, they're really doing well in their development, and 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 really helping us to put on the best sessions right now for the first team, and you know, particularly as as the uh, team is short a few a few forwards at least. Yeah, I saw the video of uh Thomas Roberts just hitting a worldie and it and it did I did raise uh, my question, either one of you have any sense that if Thomas is really going to get a serious run with the senior team this year? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. Um I'm actually as confident as I've ever been in Thomas where he is right now. Partially that's because of middle of last year, him starting to take responsibility for himself. You know, that's part of being an adult, right? So he's he's seeking extra training. He's seeking extra trainer work. He's trying to get stronger, taking responsibility for his future rather than just sort of accepting whatever Lucci tells him. He tries to arrange some trials. He goes to Byron, has some good feedback there. They tell him the same thing that everybody else has been telling him, which is that you can't be this layback, chill dude, right? you got to kick butt and dominate, as he did at the end of the North Texas season, and what I hear about him is that he's taken all that to heart. And so that he's, that video is a good example. I hear he's just bringing it. His mentality is totally different. So I'm as confident in Thomas right now as I have ever been in terms of his ability to actually get on the field and get real minutes this year. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited for where he's at. I love his mindset. I love what's going on with that kid right now. I'm super excited. Dan, I, I know uh, we haven't given you a lot of opportunities to talk, and I apologize for asking Buzz this next question because I'm afraid it's going to set him off, but you know it's his mm. favorite topic in the whole world. We now know jersey numbers for some of the new players. And, yes! And in the show notes here, written in giant red crayon... Uh, <laughs> Always it, with the crayon. Uh, it's like... Uh, and, and, hot, and, then, and then there's like yellow highlighter circling it. Uh, I'm supposed to ask Buzz to uh, allow him to talk all about numbers. <laughs> Danny, want to go? No. Um, well, Eddie Munjoma is going to be number two. Some of these we've put on Twitter, uh, which says obviously where they value him in the organization. I still think it's going to be Emma Tuomase, which you could, again, you could see Emma playing right back in the video from Thomas. Point that out. Uh, Jose Martinez is going to be three. Edwin Surreal, like I mentioned the other day, is going to, got the sixth jersey. Uh, Darth Jader is going to be number seven. Hadair. To the nine we had there. Yeah, Hadair O'Brien. I like Darth Jader better. He's seven. Jesus is nine. Uh, Nicosia Burgess, we got an image. I think, Dan, you got this image. I don't know where you got it today. Uh, Burgess were in 14, which is very cool because that's the great defensive number of this club. So I love that if he actually pays it off. Um, and I'm then, saluting uh, Ted Eck as we speak right now. Yes, the great Ted Eck. The great Leonel Alvarez, Brian Reynolds had it, uh, Drew Moore had it. It's a great oh, – George John had it. A great defender's number in this club. They tried to give it to Simo Valakari. That's one of my favorite stories, but they couldn't because somebody else was wearing it and they hadn't done the injury buyout on you yet. And then uh, Vargas is going to take 17. And then we're assuming that Cleveland Metcour, who's the homegrown signing, will be 21 because it's now available, and that's what he was in college. So um, all those numbers are fun. I love that they gave Edwin the six. Because that kid needed a boost. His mind is a mess. He needed a little love. So cool for him. And that's uh, that's all the number changes we know. Uh, I will throw in there, Buzz, after your uh, appearance on our radio show last Saturday, Andy Swift, who is, as we know, of Chilean descent and a speaker of the language, says the proper pronunciation is Obreon. O'Brien, okay. Yes. Well, that, we learn something every day. I'm sticking with Darth Jader. Well, it, we made the Ronnie O'Brien joke, and <laughs> after we went to break, yeah. he goes, by the way, I, I'm I'm going to bet that that's not pronounced O'Brien. It's pronounced <laughs> O'Brien. 
I believe it's Obreon. Yeah, Andy would know. Yeah, since Andy <laughs> yeah. speaks like eleventeen languages, and uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, has Pele's cell phone number in his on his phone. I'm gonna yeah. go with that too. Yeah, Obreon. Okay. Yeah, Hadair uh, Obreon. All right, Darth Hadair Obreon. Yeah, yeah, Darth Jader. See the, the pronunciation on the uh, on the FC Dallas website is no help at all because it just says Ha Dare O Bra B A B R A H Yan, <laughs> which makes him oh, sound like a great chess player if nothing else. Oh Brian, so wait, O Brian, O Brian. Well, maybe someday we'll actually get to stand in front of the dude and ask him directly yeah. uh, how to pronounce his name correctly. Um, I'm going with Andy until then. Uh, Obreon. Yeah. Okay. You're going to start calling him Andy. That's interesting. No. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Andy. Who is he? Why is he Who not is paying he? attention to me? <laughs> Darth Jader. Um, okay, Dan. Now I will come to you. Why don't you uh, tell us the news about the Olympic qualifying call-ups? R- really? You came to me when it concerns a country I'm not from. Okay. Just okay. rubbing it well, in. Well, our very own Jesus Ferreira made the Olympics, uh, you know, as a Colombian-born player. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, does mean that Ricardo Pepe and Tanner Tessman won't be able to uh, to try and help the U.S. to its first Olympic game since 2008. But fortunately, it does mean they'll be back in Frisco. Now, this uh, is just for the qualifier. They could, in theory, potentially be called up if the team makes it to the Olympics, correct? And Paxton and whoever else. Okay, all right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just they're, they're having the uh, qualifying tournament down in Guadalajara. So they've had... Uh, those three were at camp, um, I guess, up until today. And the, uh, they, they they start that tournament on the 18th against Costa Rica. I think Fox Sports 1 is, is going to show those games. Uh, hopefully it goes a little bit better than, than last time when uh, we witnessed that really crappy defeat to Colombia in the, in the playoff game in, in Frisco. Yeah. Both Tanner and Pepe are pretty young for that team. I mean, they would have been in the U 20 team before those championships got canceled. So it's not a big surprise that both of those guys didn't make it for the qualifiers. What I thought was interesting was that multiple people have mentioned that Dallas declined, uh, and refused to release Paxton Pomico. Um, I, I hadn't realized that that was the case. I mean, I assumed you would just not even try and call Paxton because he hasn't even proved he's healthy yet. But, you know, yeah. there's alleged that's people actually, out there saying that they turned that city house turned him down. So we'll t- try and get a clarification on that at some point. Actually, you, you're saying that's the first time I've even heard that. I mean, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are talking about Tanner Testman is a big snob and uh, Christ he's was 18. on a call earlier. Wait, yeah, Tanner's a snob? Snub. Oh, oh snub. Well, Christ is on a call and he said, hey, we're stacked with eights. I mean, that's, you know, I know a lot of people are saying that the goalkeeping situation is not great. The defense is a little bit too inexperienced. The strikers could probably do, the forward line could probably do with um, Ibobase from from Portland. But yeah, that's, if there's a position of strength, it's at the eight and that's where you're probably going to Tanner playing so yeah let's have him back in Frisco yeah I was uh I, the one little thing that caught my eye was the quote uh talking about how Jesus was like a perfect fit as a nine for this team and I and it really does interest me on how much this is going to become a storyline for FC Dallas and um and Ahara uh, moving into the season if in fact Jesus is able to perform for the national team well, it doesn't shock me because uh, I, we wrote a thing. I think I wrote about it, about how Jason, uh, how Jesus Ferreira reminds me of any player in FC Dallas history. He reminds me most of Jason Christ, not his own father, but Jason, because he plays that withdrawn off nine like Jason does. Jason always had a high striker to play with until later in his career. But, you know, I'm sure Jesus looks, I mean, I'm sure Jason looks at Jesus and sees himself in a lot of ways, you know? Yeah. I thought you were uh, trying to insinuate that Jason Christ is Jesus' actual father. No. Okay, just wanted to make sure. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, uh, the next thing on the list now, and I want Dan to talk because we just don't have enough Dan in this podcast. Uh, Dan, why don't you tell everybody why they should uh, sign up and become a Patreon of uh, Third Degree? 
Well, you get some really cool things like... Um, a tote bag? An umbrella, maybe? There, there is not a tote bag. There is not a third degree edition thong. An but iPhone, there is... An iPhone uh, case, maybe, potentially? I mean, it could do it, actually. Oh, okay. uh, they'd still have to buy it, but you know. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, there is the Discord, which is a very, uh, very fun place right now. Uh, Tell everybody the, what the, that is for people who don't know what Discord is. So Discord is is basically where uh, where gamers hang out and they talk to each other. But we've bastardized it to uh, to allow FC Dallas fans to talk to like minded people who know soccer and hopefully steer clear of the FC Dallas fans Facebook group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you did that. <laughs> you mean the portal to hell? <laughs> it is, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's definitely some knowledgeable people in there who like us cringe at ninety five percent of the posts, um, but uh, you know it, it's it's great. You can uh, you can go direct to the source and ask Buzz questions very quickly. There's uh, voice chat in there for people to like hang out and talk about stuff. Um, <laughs> There is also uh, the burns. Uh, Buzz does his third degree burns, little five minute talks on a on a particular subject. Uh, there was a, a very good one, actually. The discussion about um, Jose Martinez that was the the burn a couple of days ago. There's been other ones about what FC Dallas does in analytics and things like that. And as a as a Patreon subscriber, you also get the chance to ask Buzz. Hey, I would like to know about this topic. Whether it's, you know, what does Marcus wash the uh, the home team kits in to make them so nice and red? And Buzz will try to answer that question. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one. That's a good call, Marcus. Uh, Buzz, would you like to add anything to that promotional mention? Yeah, patreon.com slash third degree. Uh, we're up to 188 patrons, so we're the, the second target of 200 patrons is in sight i'm super excited i'm really glad everyone's supporting us and i hope that anyone listening will choose to give us a, a buck or two that'd be awesome once you hit 199 i'm gonna drop my my patreon subscription <laughs> just to piss you off, <laughs> just, just piss me off. <laughs> yeah you that know that happened I... on uh that happened on 4,000 twitter followers i was like yes 4,000 and somebody was like oh you will see if that happens blonk 3999 i was like oh dude. earlier today alexi lawless uh, somehow got access to and tried out spaces which is twitter's ripoff of clubhouse mm. uh and he did that for a little bit and that was actually interesting and it gave me the idea that maybe we should consider doing uh something like that live after games or something um, like immediate reaction after a game, we could we could pop on a, a Twitter Spaces or a Clubhouse and set up a room for people to come in, and then you know people can ask questions and they can hear us talking about our reactions to the game. I just it seemed like an interesting idea. Now I don't know how you lock it up against a Patreon if we if we wanted to make it for members only or if we wanted to make it open for everybody. I I guess we can figure that out as we go along, but. Um, well, we'll talk about it. Seemed like a an interesting hey, maybe, idea. Maybe that could be the uh, the voice chat thing in uh, in, in Discord. Discord. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's yeah, a good yeah. place for it. Yeah, that you know. By the way, I don't I don't participate or type a, or write up a lot in that Discord, but I read it quite often, and I really do uh, enjoy and appreciate uh, everybody's input over there. And that is definitely a reason to consider giving Buzz a buck or two a month or whatever it is you want to give him, uh, so that you have access to that because there's. Uh, yeah. The Discord is a perk for five dollars and up. Oh, support. I'm sorry, you have to. So that's uh, a VIP perk, yeah, right. and for just everybody. Special, special support. It's going to cost you sixty bucks a year. All right, excellent. So that's basically well, if you sub- the- if you subscribe to the Athletic, take that money that's and right. put it into disc <laughs> into Patreon because you will actually hear at least one thing about FC Dallas in the calendar year. Well, the third degree burns are the little mini podcasts, and everybody that supports gets those. So that's the base level. Like, here's your huge reward for supporting us. And then the Discord's a perk for everyone that goes a little above and beyond. The so mini podcast. The Excellent. Okay. Yeah, it's what I call them. They're like two you minutes. You get a the bit shortest, of buzz in longest. your day every day. Yeah. A little, Pretty much every day. Yeah. Wake up in the morning and get an injection of buzz. Uh, well, uh, this is a interesting uh, podcast because I'm uh, I'm delighted that I had my very first Ron Burgundy moment. I'm still reeling from that <laughs> realization that that happened. Uh, uh, and yes, uh, I'm going to say it now. It will be the 
the cold open of the show. I will I will do that. Well, it, so. it already has been for people listening. That's true. Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. By the time somebody listens to this, they will have already enjoyed the <laughs> me reading Buzz's squished together copy <laughs> nonsensically, <Sorry>. yes. <laughs> it's L- my fault. Luckily, it didn't have anything uh, salacious in there. I would have yeah. just flat out read it. All right, Dan, thank you for your time today, sir. Awesome as always. And again, kudos on the kick-assness of your mock-ups of the Powder Blue stuff. Thank you, and uh, keep kicking ass on, on the on the kick-ass around and stuff. Okay. And Buzz, enjoy your vacation and uh, whatever baby-making you're doing down there in uh, Hico, <laughs> Texas. That's not happening. Don't forget to read the, uh, prom- the sponsor one more time. I, w- I, I won't forget, Buzz. It's right here in front of me. <laughs> I've, I've even gotten Thanks, the man. version without the... Error the extra part. with the extra uh, unintended copy in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, don't forget that Third Degree, the podcast, is brought to you by Soccer 90. Go on, go grab your new 2021 FC Dallas gear at Soccer90.com. They've got these new FC Dallas Tiro pants. They've got T-shirts. And, yes, they have the new Community Powder Blue kit available. And do not forget, absolutely don't forget, Third Degree listeners use the promo code Third Degree to receive 25% off at te- checkout. Dear Amy, I love you very much. I cannot wait to go on vacation with you and drive all the way down to Heiko, That's, Texas, where we did get to again, lay Peter. around in our pajamas. Oh, oh, oh. That's not in there. That's not in Oh, that's that. You know, why did you cut and paste a love letter to your wife into the copy, yeah. Buzz? I would not have done that. That's weird. <laughs> Thank you, FC Dallas Curious fan. Uh, we appreciate you listening, and we'll talk to you next week on another edition of Third Degree, Ooh. the podcast. Thomas Roberts is back. Third Degree, the Third Degree, the podcast. Third Degree, the Third Degree, the podcast. Third Degree, the Third Degree, the podcast. Third Degree. Yeah, I can.